Now, to find out how U.S. voters are faring ahead of this election, a team of CCTV journalists hit the road, stopping in some of the, the big all-American cities around the country. In Nashville, Tennessee, our very own Sean Caleb has found out that the economic beat goes on no matter what's happening here in Washington, D.C. Welcome to the Boomtown, Nashville, Tennessee. Since 1925, in good times and bad, the famed Grand Old Opry has been a staple, an economic linchpin for the city. Someone's in the kitchen with a dying knife, strumming on the old banjo. On this night, Bela Fleck and Abigail Washburn bring their brand of old-fashioned bluegrass to this hallowed hall. Strumming on the old banjo. accomplished banjo musicians anywhere moved here when disco was fading and heavy metal was in its infancy back in 1981 and through it all he's watched Nashville flourish the first year I came here everybody said wow Nashville's exploding in 1981 mm -hmm. and they've been saying that ever you know ever since so it never changes it's just part of Nashville for me it's a city that embraces history in many ways thriving on it Take Hat Show Print, for example. They create posters the way it was done more than 100 years ago, even mixing ink by hand and examining every single poster. It's the little imperfections that are part of the real treasure. Country music and Hatch have a history that is intertwined. But it's not just country, because Nashville is so centrally located that a lot of musicians on tour would come through Nashville, they could get their posters done. It's within a day's drive of many of the major cities in the U.S. Nashville is riding the crest of the economic recovery. It has a broad financial base that includes health care, higher education, and distribution. But the music industry is the financial glue that holds this city's economy together. The music community brings a lot of creative people here. They're idea makers. The Chamber of Commerce says you can see the activity on the city's popular thoroughfare, Broadway, a top attraction for nightlife and tourists. As the United States approaches its important midterm election, Nashville is basking in the glow of a healthy economy, while much of the country focuses on national topics. President Obama's popularity has plunged in Tennessee, and business leaders say most Nashville voters are consumed with hot-button state and local issues like improving education and transportation. I think what you're seeing now is people are relying more on the state, state leadership, less on federal leadership to, you know, create the quality of life, create the, the atmosphere here that helps this be a prosperous community. George Groom arguably knows more about stringed instruments than anyone. I don't make my living playing, though. He's been selling vintage and new instruments for more than 45 years. And ask him what Nashville is like today. But it's growing like a weed. Nashville is a totally different looking city than it was when I came to town. I came to Nashville in 1969. Nashville does have a very healthy economy right now. And it's a remarkably diversified economy. So I have considerable faith in it continuing, but I'm not naive enough to think that there will be no bumps in the road. He's also optimistic enough to believe Nashville's broad-based economy is well positioned to help navigate around those bumps. So even if healthcare, car manufacturing, and tourism take a hit, Music City has something it can always bank on. We've got Sean Caleb's right here with us back from Nashville, Tennessee. And I guess the first question is, why did you choose Nashville? Well, we actually started in Chicago, worked our way down St. Louis, a small town just south of St. Louis. Little Rock went to Memphis, then Nashville. Uh, a lot of these towns, they're fighting very difficult times. Nashville is one riding the crest. So we thought we'd go there to see what makes this city different and why it is doing well and why it is bucking a trend, certainly, 
that Tennessee is dealing with. And of course, you're there part of our, our midterms uh, election plan, and a lot of it has to do, and we talked about this before we went on the air, national politics versus local politics. What were you surprised to find out? Well, I was surprised to find out just how frustrated people are with this Washington disconnect that we all talk about. They don't about. like Washington. They don't like Washington at all. They They're very. Washington. I don't know if they hate Washington. They hate the way it works. They're very frustrated with how polarized everything. Republicans, if Republicans like it, Democrats aren't going to like it, and vice versa. And they feel that there's just not any common ground, and they just feel as though Washington has completely lost touch with the average, average person out there working, making a living in America's heartland or anywhere else. I mean, it's, we had this huge debate about Obamacare, and that's mm -hmm. something that polarized the country. You had to be on one side or the other. Now, keep in mind, for our voters, or for our viewers, Tennessee voted for Obama or voted against Obama right. twice, both in 2008 and 2012. So it's no surprise they could care less about Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act. Mm -hmm. But now that's in place, is there a sense that perhaps they, they, they maybe has warmed up to it, or they still feel polarized, do you think, when it comes to looking at national politics? Let me take Nashville first, and then I'll kind of broaden it, out to, broaden it to Tennessee. Nashville right now has completely moved on from Obama, from national politics, from the national candidates, the, the senators, uh, senator and uh, congressman who are going to be up for re-election. You know, all of the Congress is up for re-election, one-third of the Senate. They're looking at state issues. That's what they're looking at because their economy is doing so well right now, they're putting all their chips in that basket that the state continue, can continue to pump life. But as Rochelle was saying, this is a big election. This could shift the whole game in the Senate. And if that's the case, I mean, and that there's House seats up for re-election as well, sure. that if the voters are frustrated with the gridlock, their votes do count. They do, but that's the rational side of it. Uh, the, the, the realistic side is people are so fed up if you look at the ads that just punish these people day and night, it's it, they're, they're all negative. And people in Nashville, they want to move beyond that. All right, forget yeah. about the negative. Let's stick with the okay. positive. The positive <laughs> that you're here with us all week long. I know you've got a, a number of big topics. You've got immigration tomorrow. We've got all kinds of stuff uh, happening. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us, give us a little sneak peek. I was really surprised. Let's start with immigration. We went to Chicago, Barack Obama's hometown, where a whole army of Latinos, African Americans, got out and pushed, helped push Obama into office in 2008. Latinos who fought for him six years ago are furious with Obama now. They believe they've been lied to, and that's the word they use. Obama has promised, promised to reform immigration, to stop deporting families. Well, he's deported more than two million uh, people from this country. They can now call him the deporter in chief. I was really surprised at just how furious Latinos are with President Obama. Yeah, and look, it's a very personal situation uh, for that demographic as well. Sean Caleb, great to have you here. Excellent work. Thank you very much. Now, our CCTV election team has traveled, as Sean mentioned, Chicago for a look at the immigration policy affecting one community there as well. People are, are angry, they're frustrated, they're disillusioned by our system of government in which politicians say what uh, they think people want to hear and then not deliver. The whole story is coming up in the next hour and for complete coverage on the team's election road trip, including photos and interview extras, go to cctvontheroad.tumblr.com.